what is the course like what did you really study about what's the structure like and how much of it was practical learning how difficult was it yeah absolutely um so the course structure um i had i can't remember the exact number of courses that i had i think it was 14 courses um that i had in total uh throughout the four um quarters of my um of my grad school um the course structure i would say had about uh, 40% of engineering courses and 60% of business courses um this was also because we had electives and we had options to choose from um okay. since i per, you know personally i enjoyed marketing a lot i selected a lot of my electives that leaned towards marketing um so that was from the school of business um in terms of engineering courses also there there aren't any um you know very engineering heavy courses kind of the max that we did were data analytics statistics and that's just kind of where the engineering courses um lied um in terms of business courses there were a lot of interesting ones that i enjoyed um courses like operations management marketing as i mentioned mentioned um platforms um these were some really interesting courses that i had uh, from the business school so yeah i'd say if the depending on the way you want to tailor your course you can make mm-hmm. it a 640 of business and engineering or 5050 um depending on your school and the course but that's kind of how mine was um in terms of practical learning and difficulty level i'd say that um the practical learning scope is really high with mem um there have been a lot of the skills that i have used through the course which i'm actually applying in my place of work right now um there are a lot of theoretical there's a lot of theor- theoretical knowledge that i've acquired through mem which i'm not actually applying in in my place of work um but the kind of case studies that we worked on the the group projects the assignments i think that's really helped me shape the way i think um shape the way i analyze a problem um even in my place of work so it's it's mm-hmm. definitely been helpful um difficulty level i would actually say um my my course at dartmouth it wasn't stressful it's not the kind of stress that you undergo in undergrad where you have like 17 chapters to study for before an exam or you have just a bunch of stuff to remember mm-hmm. um so that way it's it's super easy some of the subjects are like open book and it, it's really it's not stressful in that sense um but i i would say that you know it's it's constant work we've we had assignments do every week because it's just one and a half years um the course it was it was pretty like we were on our feet every single day so it keeps you really busy in that sense but it's not stressful or difficult to get through the exams and then you know okay study the material and but i mean i've heard a lot of mba people saying that their courses are very rigorous they don't really get any time to sleep so was it rigorous in that sense or it was still that i mean i'm surprised though because i know that mbas <laughs> well maybe um but you know per, from an mem perspective and you know from my experience i'd say that weekdays were kind of like that it was like okay. super i didn't have time to really do any of my hobbies or activities weekdays were always classes come home take a break do some assignments or study for a test that's going to happen that week but my weekends were like pretty chill um okay i'm guessing why the whole rigor would have come and what happens with mem and mba schools is that a lot of your time gets spent into networking and finding an internship mm-hmm. and a job um that's something that people start doing and are almost required to do like month 1 or month 2 after they join so in that sense yes a lot of time is taken but just academic uh, academically i i don't think it's it it was too difficult for me and uh, did you all have the concept of campus placements or was it just your networking or applying by yourself so the way it happens here is that there are a couple of these um 
I, I forget exactly what's called it's like a campus event or a campus fair career fair mm-hmm. sorry mm-hmm. Um, where you do have a bunch of companies that come in and you can talk to them they have their own booths and you know some of them you send them you know your resume in my personal opinion um it's been nice to get that exposure it hasn't really helped me um i think i've spoken to some of my friends they haven't really gotten career opportunities from the career fair specifically mm-hmm. but it does help you know get you to know oh this company is doing that and this is out there or these are the kind of roles mm-hmm. that they're interested um you know in so so it gives you just sort of sort of an idea Uh, as to what you can apply to and what you might be interested in um personally for me um networking with alumni from the college helped me a lot um my honeywell internship i got because of an alumni um and my role at dartmouth i al- i got because my manager at dart at uh, lockheed martin sorry right now was my mentor for one of my projects in dartmouth so the connections um that you make in your business school the people that you talk to the networks you build um i think that's super super important um for for business uh roles um you know yeah so having um, your linkedin profile always active definitely <laughs> <a bit. laughs> yeah and while we're on the note of networking uh, tanvi we have this um discord server of the reticulum community Uh, yeah. where we are trying to do exactly this so we're trying to match up people students who have questions with professionals like you so it would be really great if you could join that yeah no absolutely i um i'll be more than happy and super interested to be to be a part of that so, so yeah. that's that's awesome i'm sure people will be so happy to have you there okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks <laughs> um all right so um what are the different kinds of jobs or profiles that you can enter into after an mem degree yeah um so i this is just something that i i mentioned in the beginning also i don't right. think that you're limited and bound to a specific type of role once you do an mem um i do know a couple of mems who sorry excuse me who have gone completely back into their engineering type of roles mm-hmm. i do know a couple of mems who have gone all the way and like done mba type of roles like consulting and finance so there is a really a large spectrum with what you can do after an mem but from the majority that i've seen in my class and my my alumni um the trend leans towards uh product management product marketing management uh data analytics and business analytics um so really i think that's that's where most of the mems people who work who people who do mem um you know end up in after mm-hmm. um and that could be in any sort of type of company i guess i could say um a lot of my friends work in the healthcare industry a lot of my friends most of them work in tech definitely um you know some of them work as product managers in fashion so i think it's it's really broad in terms of the industry mm-hmm. but the roles more or less look like um product management product marketing yeah um okay so would you say it's a good place to be for someone who is kind of confused between business and engineering i think it would give you um a good experience and some time to figure things out right yeah i definitely think um i can't say for confused but if, if you're someone who's who is at least like me and i'm i'm just speaking because uh, it's out of my own experience but mm-hmm. if you know for sure that you're not the kind of person who wants to do tech related work and to, by tech related i mean actually do core engineering um you know whether it's mechanical or or you, you don't you, you're not the kind of person who likes to code um but you do want to just get a a feel of the business world and just understand really what what all that's about like what is product management what is mm-hmm. business analytics after all um then i think mem is definitely a very good course to give you that kind of an exposure um you know if you're someone who's confused between engineering and business 
I would personally recommend maybe taking just a year off, um, maybe doing an engineering role for a while to see if you know you do enjoy doing that. Um, taking some time out to talk to people, read information mm-hmm. online to see what's out there um, is something that maybe would be helpful um, with that. True. Um, and so you studied at an Ivy. That's like a huge <laughs> deal. So what was that? journey like and would you say it's worth the you know whole hike <laughs> <laughs> um let me see so what was that journey like i i i definitely think my journey at dartmouth was amazing um i made some of the closest friends i have now over there um you know there, there's just a lot of experiences other than just sitting in the classroom that an ivy league has to offer um and it you know the the network you build the kind of people you meet um i think it's it's just wonderful so for me personally yeah i think it was worth it um something that dartmouth prides itself on is the networking ability that it has um you know even reaching out to an alumni on linkedin who someone who studied at dartmouth most of the time they end up being really helpful in terms of replying and helping you figure out what you want. Um, sometimes even getting your application to, to a certain role that you want, it, it gets you to the mm-hmm. interview level. Um, so they really, really uh, kind of pride themselves on the whole networking um, that they have going with their alumni. Yeah. Um, but other than that, you know, I would definitely say great professors. There is a whole, there is a great ac- academic environment over there. Um, and at the same time, for my course, like I mentioned, there wasn't that kind of a stress that you would imagine an Ivy League to mm-hmm. have where you're just pressurized like every single day and you have like no time to breathe. Um, so so I, I, I feel like I got the best of both worlds just in terms of having a personal life, but also... Um, you know, being able to study in, in a school like that. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Um, okay, so how did you finance your degree? And like, what are the other ways people usually do it? Yeah, um, that's, I think that's an important thing to think about. And that's a good question. Um, so for me, my, you know, so for my entire grad school education, it was financed uh, partly by my parents and partly by a student loan that I took. Mm-hmm. Um, because I was able to, I took a student loan from the government of the United States. Um, so that okay. was the route that I took. I do know a lot of Indian students, a lot of my friends who studied in grad schools, and this is not just for MEM or MBA, this is just for any grad school that you wanna do in the US or, or any other country abroad. Um, there are a bunch of you know, student loan options that you can take within India. Mm-hmm. Um, you, know, you can take the loan in, in terms of rupees, paid back in rupees. Um, there, there are a lot of options like that. I'm pretty sure there are options which you can take abroad as well um, Mm -hmm. for student loans. But, you know, that's one way that people do it. And the campus, most of the time, universities have a lot of part-time jobs that they offer. Um, I did a campus job. um, I was working in the library part-time while studying. Mm -hmm. So I was not able to finance a whole lot, but um, definitely that, that helped me a little bit with my personal expenditure um, and then some of the living costs that I wanted to, to settle out. So student loan plus help from parents plus a part-time job. That's that's kind of how I financed my, my grad school. Nice, sounds good. Um, so now we're nearing the end. And yeah. is there anything you wish you knew while you were applying for this program? Um, so any tips in terms of that that you would have for the viewers? Yeah, for sure. Two things. Um, firstly, it's, I think if you're going to do a business kind of a course, MBA, MAM, MIM, MIS, any of these, um, make sure that, you know, you hone your networking skills, you, you know how to reach out to people, talk to them, you know how to 
kind of frame a, a well structured um, and a professional message if you want if you want to reach out to someone or an email. Um, so just professionalism, networking. I think these are extremely important things. More than I I don't really want to say this, but more than the technical knowledge. Also, mm -hmm. if you have your networking skills and you have your professionalism skills, you know, on your fingertips, that'll take you a really, really far um, way and a really long way, uh, both in your career and also while getting into a university of your choice. So that is something I wish I had like kept ready. My LinkedIn wasn't super great before I joined college, but um, it's important to, to have that. So that's one thing. Mm -hmm. And the second thing, um, and this is based on the colleges and the universities that I apply to, but applying for a financial aid from your university does not hurt your application. And this is a very, um, I feel like I had a wrong misconception while I was applying. I always thought that, oh, if I apply for a financial aid, then maybe uh, my application would be scrutinized a little harder. Mm -hmm. um, that is, I can't say for all universities, but for the ones that I applied to, and especially for Dartmouth, um, that was not the case. So, you know, feel free to apply for financial aid if you want to, if you need to. Um, yeah, there's no extra scrutiny scrutiny over there sorry and okay yeah <laughs> um Definitely. would you like to tell us what all universities you applied to yeah definitely um so i applied to dartmouth mm -hmm. uh i applied to duke i applied to cornell um i applied to columbia uh northeastern university ut dallas um, I applied to Rochester Institute of Technology. I applied to Purdue. Yeah, I think these were mostly the colleges I applied to. I, I might have missed okay. one, one of the UCs I think I applied to, but yeah. All right, that's nice. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> that was my list. <laughs> I, I hope this was a little helpful. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, it's such a struggle. I mean, the whole background research is, you know, hunting down which universities would be a good fit. But I mean, that's something a person has to do by themselves. Can't oh, yeah. rely on somebody else's research. For sure. I think, yeah, it's super helpful to talk to people who have been there, um, do a lot of online reading, a lot of online research, see which universities to me match your interest. Um, Yocket is a good site to kind of refer to for that. Yeah, it, it's it's a lot of work and the whole process before, during application, it, it's a lot of work, but you know, I, I for me, it was definitely worth it at the end. So all the encouragement for people who are trying to apply to grad school. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Sanvi, thank you so much again for joining us, taking the time out. Yeah, definitely. And all the best to you for everything that's ahead. All right. Thank you so much. And, and good luck to you too. And, and Thank thanks you. for taking time out. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>